Welcome to Mailbag, where I spend my money so you don't have to spend yours. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Alright, let's see what's in here. Let's just excuse the air conditioning noise. My face is a bit noisy and it's quite hot now because it's summertime, so um, there's not much I'm doing, I'm afraid. Okay, that's nicely packaged. So this is a pair of tweezers, which they've gone all out onto actually package. Well, these are really light, and they're really easy to grab. They're really sensitive. So these are also anodized, really fine point. For example, I want to pick up a part like this. Not a problem, right? These were fairly expensive, I think, for what they were. I think these were about $15 or something like that. Maybe $20. Might have been a little bit less. Um, all a couple of pairs of different tweezers. This is obviously one of the ones that's already arrived. It's got a little stop in there so you can't over compress. That's nice. Now I'll see how they go. I mean, I'm trying to get a collection of different tweezers. Just got the obviously protective tip on there as well. So you don't damage the tips. They feel quite nice. I mean, it's quite flash packaging, isn't it? How much money you went into making the packaging alone? No? I don't know how much money went to. I paid went into the paying for the packaging. Interesting. Well, it protects them pretty well. I'll give them that. Does that job? Cool. So what's in here? This I don't recognise. Maybe this is the free gift thing. Oh, it's the cards, is it? Oh, it's just the cards. But these might be. Um, might be good for um, getting into bits of gear. You know, you can use that to, to get behind a, a screen on a laptop or something like that, or on a, um, a phone, you know, to get down and cut the glue through. So, yeah, okay, they're cards, but they might be good for that. Obviously, it's, you know, advertising and stuff, but I think that could be handy in itself, in its, you know, in their own right as a tool. So, cool. Right, next thing. Yep. Oh, just some uh, solder wick. About the same, I think. Three mil. Yeah, about the same, same wick. So I got this because I've been using it a bit recently with the MacBooks. I didn't used to use solder wick at all, and I never, I always had trouble getting it to work at all. <laughs> Look at that. Look how much is actually in there. Most of spool when there's hardly anything in it. Yeah. Anyway, here's the end. So, yeah, I mean, it's okay, I suppose, but you think to put more in there. And I've got this one here, which I've been using. Mind you, it says 1.5 meters, I mean, that's what's going to be in it, isn't it? And this is the other one I've been using here. Um, This is 0.919 inches wide, but that is in millimeters. I've got no bloody idea. It's about, about twice the size of that, so it's probably about 6 mil only. So, I've been using that one, but that's a bit big for some stuff, so I wanted to get some smaller stuff. So. But yeah, that's not going to last long, is it? Why don't just put more in there? Why don't make, put like 3 meters in there or something? Alright, it's in here. More tweezers, excellent. That's all sort of the ones I ordered, I think. So these are stainless, apparently. They look like stainless. I think I'd believe it. Got a nice tip on there. 
pretty fine. The component pickup test, I won't orientate it correctly. There you go, same component. Give an idea of scale, hopefully. No. Um, it's not bad. The tips are fairly fine. Could be slightly better, but they're not bad. They're pretty small. And also got an angled one as well. But they feel quite nice. I do believe these are stainless. I think I'd trust that statement. They look like stainless to me. Yeah. I think the tips on this one is actually slightly finer than the other one. It is. The tips on this one are slightly better. But yeah. That's alright. Obviously I've got these for doing MacBook work. You need decent tweezers. Um, I mean you've got these cheapo ones which are okay to a point but you can see the the tips just don't last very well. You see I've had to bend them a little bit and get them straight, <laughs> straighten them up a couple of times and try and get a fine enough tip and bent around so I can pick up parts of them slipping off. I mean these are okay for general purpose stuff but they only have a limited life. So I want to get some decent ones. I've got them now. So obviously there'll be uh, links down in the description for these for these ones and uh, and this other one here as well. I'll chuck links down there so you can uh, hopefully buy them yourself if you're interested in them. Get some decent tweezers. I believe they're pretty good. They look like good quality to me. Alright, let's see what's in here. It's fairly heavy. Oh, another jig, right. Um, I already have a jig for doing SMD reballing, or BGA stuff, which I've used, but I didn't like it. I found it a bit, I don't know, I just, I just wasn't impressed by its performance. So I thought, right, well, I'll try getting a different jig. And uh, we'll see if this one can do it. Now, how's this work? So basically you got this here, the whole thing spins, so you can, from any side you can spin it and adjust the, the size. It goes down pretty small. Now, what, how small can it go? But there's other tweezers around here. Yeah. Let's get a small chip. This obviously isn't a BGA, but this will do. Oh, no, I lost it inside it now. Okay. It's a QFN, so you know it's not exactly the same, but oh, wrong way. So it is a really small QFN, All right? And that's held in there. That looks absolutely fine. So I can work on chips that small with this with this jig. Which is far better than one I, I did mess around with. I actually modified that one yesterday. I, I ground it down. Which I mean, so this is the jig I, I got before, which I intended to use for doing um, SMC, right? SMC work. But it didn't go down small enough. So what I've actually done is I've pulled it apart. I've ground down just one side, which obviously offset it slightly, but you can actually adjust the position on the thread slightly. So. Um, so I've ground on one side, if you wanted to do it properly you would have ground down both sides so it's perfectly matched but I don't want to ground down both sides. So I've ground down both sides, uh, one side there to make it narrower so it can close up further. And also I ground off the top because the um, it was the, the channel in there, the, the pocket for the IC to go into was too deep. So when I put a, an SMC in there it's actually below the surface which is absolutely no good. So I've done those modifications today, it's just yesterday. And um, yeah, now we've got this one turned up, which looks like it's actually going to be far better. So I've also got these on here too. What do these do? Don't know. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. I know what it is. I know what it is. So when you put the top on, it 
I think. You can adjust the height. Oh, my chips fell out. That's right. um, yeah, so you can adjust the height of the stencil. You want those up and down. That will adjust whether the stencil is sitting on height. So you can adjust for different package sizes. That's what that's for. Nice. Um, and so stencil should fit in there. Um, somehow, I think it will sandwich in there, much like this one does. The problem is this stencil here, it warps. As soon as you heat it up, it just bends and bows and warps. It's absolutely rubbish. Um, so I've actually got a different stencil I have to use, which is actually why I bought this. I was hoping I could use it on it, but I think that's going to be practical. So, cool. So if you've got a proper stencil which is designed to be heated, obviously this one here isn't, unfortunately. Um, almost doesn't warp. Maybe they all go together. You must sandwich a stencil in there somehow. I don't see any actual, like, those are threaded holes. I'm just trying to see if it's supposed to get us apart to get a stencil in. Is it pulling apart? Oh, yeah. Oh, magnets. Magnetic. Even better. That's nice. Um, okay, let's get this stencil out, this crappy one. And, um, I mean, comparatively, it's crappy. <laughs> it's, got, it's, it's still got uses. It's still great for put, like, putting a chip in to clean it up and stuff like that. Now, modified, it should actually be fine. But, um, obviously, this particular stencil is a problem. So, let's just get rid of this. We'll try putting a stencil in this new one. Need to try and find a decent stencil with this thing. You know, I can get a uh, 980 YFC stencil doing SMCs, one which one warp. If you know where I can get one, let me know. So it'll just sit in there and it floats. So if you want to, you can actually clamp it down with bolts as well, by the looks of it. So that, that holds it quite securely, and that's nice. It doesn't slide around too loosely and allows you to adjust it. If you really need to, you can you can stick a cap screw through there and clamp it in place. That's really nice. I like that. I'll check links down below for these too. This is a nice nice jig. That is far better than this one. Um, well, this one's okay, but it's it just doesn't compare. You know, it will do the job, but this is much nicer. Much nicer. Um, get that top back off again. Alignment. Yep, that's like smack bang in the middle there. So, yep, the alignment looks pretty good. Pretty even gap around the outside from where I think the middle is on that. That's nice. Obviously now I can actually clamp a chip in there. When I heat up, I'm just lift this off. There's very little play in that. Almost none at all. That's really nice tolerances. Far better than this one here, which wobbles all over the bloody place. I think I've gone about this one enough. It's a nice jig. It's, fine. it's definitely nice on that one. I think you get the idea.